We have a book in our library, pictures of the peaks in California that are over 14,000 feet tall. It's a lovely book. At the back of the book is a photographer's note. He talks about how when he was younger he used to travel to the Sierras with a famous photographer who was known for his sharp contrasts, intense colors, dramatic photos. And so when this photographer decided to set out and photograph all of the peaks over 14,000 feet, he wanted the same effect. Pictures right at dawn, right at sunset of the mountains, picking up the colors of the setting sun, intense oranges and pinks, or of the rising sun, intense oranges and pinks. But as he took rolls and rolls of film, he began to notice he actually preferred the pictures before sunrise and after sunset, when there was a diffuse light and all the details of the peaks stood out. Each detail stood out, was given equal prominence. And it was the photographs in that diffuse light that he chose for the book. The book reminds me of a perception that's very useful in the meditation. We usually think of the breath being done by certain parts of the body and not by other parts of the body. Some of your muscles are the workers and the others are the freeloaders. And we tend to focus, when we focus on the breath, on the workers and leave the others in the background. And so we get an unbalanced picture. In the beginning of the meditation, it's useful. You need a place to keep your focus anchored. And the conception of the breath goes either that's the one spot where you're inhaling, or that's the one spot that's doing the work of sort of sucking in the air, sucking in the breath. And then you can move from that, the perception of the breath coming from the outside to the perception of the breath originating inside. But again, there are centers of the breath, and John Lee talks about them. The top of the head, the middle of the head, the palate, the base of the throat, the tip of the sternum, the point just above the navel. And those are just a few. You think of the breath radiating from those spots. And if you sense any spot where there's a blockage, as that breath energy radiates, you allow it to dissolve. And this perception gets you closer to that state where you can breathe more and more calmly. You don't feel the need to pull breath energy in from outside because you realize it's there inside. But you can move that perception even Further, you can think of every cell in the body as being a little breath center, expanding, contracting. Everybody has the same weight. Everybody pulls the same weight. You try to expand your awareness to be in touch with all of those parts of the, the breath energy without giving prominence to anyone. And you begin to see a lot of details of the breath energy in the body that you would miss otherwise. At the same time, there's a very strong sense that there's never any, any moment where the body doesn't have breath. It's there all the time. So you can stay with one of these breath sensations, or all these breath sensations, all the way through the in-breath, all the way throughout, all the way in between. And this way you're your focus is not paused. In other words, often when we meditate, our attention is there in phrases, like phrases of music. A few notes are connected and there's a pause, and a few notes are connected and there's a pause. Or like a movie where there are many different takes. There's a short take here, and then the camera angle shifts and there's a short take there. It's very rare that you have one long, single take where the camera doesn't move, or you don't leave that, that particular camera angle. 
but when you can stay with the one camera angle and have that long take, it's a lot calmer. You notice as with TV nowadays, the little bits and pieces of which the shows are composed are a lot shorter. It's very frazzling to the nerves. But if you have the one long take, it's much more calming. And here your long take can be every cell in the body is breathing in, every cell in the body is breathing out. It's, they're all right there all the time. It's if the body were filled with a diffuse light and all the details stand out. This is probably the best perception you can have that can get the mind into strong states of concentration where the breath is minimal. And yet you don't feel starved of breath. You actually feel full. So it may take a while to work up to this. And you do start out with the sense that you're going to spotlight some parts of the body rather than others as you get going with the breath, you get going with each meditation session. But there will come a time when you want to switch first to the perception that the breath originates inside, and then with the perception that the breath originates with every cell equally throughout the body. And see what that does to help the mind settle down. Your calming mental fabrication, in other words, the perception of the breath originating in every cell is much calmer than the perception of the breath originating at any one spot to the detriment of others. It gets the mind calmer. And it gets the breath calmer as well. This is one of the ways in which those tetrads in the breath meditation are all happening at the same time. You're calming bodily fabrication by calming mental fabrication. It's in this way you can begin to see how all those tetrads, the tetrad related to the body, the tetrad related to feelings, and the tetrad related to the mind, and the tetrad related to dhammas help one another along as you get more sensitive to the process of fabrication. Energize in the beginning, and then calm it down. You're following the same pattern of the factors for awakening. There's the analysis that builds on mindfulness, followed by effort and rapture, and then calm, concentration, equanimity. It's that analysis of qualities that helps you see fabrication, and it's the final ones that help you to calm fabrication down. You see the body and the mind working together this way. For the sake of a very stable, solid awareness. That allows you to pick up insights in areas that used to be hidden by the fact that the spotlight was someplace else. Because wherever there's a spotlight, there's going to be a lot of darkness around it. But where there's a diffuse light, everything is allowed to glow with its own light and to show itself for what it is. <laughs> 